My name is Alastair Lansley and I'm the Chief Architect for the Channel Tunnel Rail Link. I've made railway stations my life and I think I've probably done that because I think that they are the last remaining vestiges of true public space. I was asked to put together an arts policy for the station as a whole. I thought we need a particular piece of sculpture beneath the station clock. I am Mike Luddy, I'm project director uh, and I uh, am responsible for bringing St Pancras, Stratford and Ebbsfleet to life. We um, originally looked at that upper area of St Pancras as being an area we called rendezvous, which is trying to recreate what the Victorians always had in their stations, which is this place where people meet. Under the fantastic roof and under the amazing clock, we wanted a piece of art that expressed that meeting as an idea. And I think I said at the time, it would aspire to be as loved and known as the Statue of Liberty. Now there's a brief for you. So um, no mean uh, uh, feat there to achieve. And of course with one year to produce the piece, um, which is uh, not very much time. I was speaking to an architectural friend of mine who mentioned the Battle of Britain monument. What you see here is people spending some time looking at the detail and engaging with this piece of art rather than it just being a boring monument, it actually means something to people. So I contacted Paul Day and said, look, we want to create this piece of sculpture at St Pancras. I forgot the brief initially, I just put the brief to one side and the first thing for me to do was to actually go and look at the site. And so I was looking to the station initially and to its architecture for that sort of flash of inspiration. And the next morning he rang me up and said, Mike, you know, I've, I've got something I want to show you, can I come in to see you, can I come in to see you? And he came in with this sketch and it was a sketch of a couple embracing this huge scale quite figurative, quite literal, but also very sensual. And I think the faces, the faces for me, have a, almost a classical appeal, almost a mythical appeal. And I just looked at it and I thought, that's exactly what we meant. Once the drawings had aroused the interest of LCR, I was working with models and I was working from photographs of myself and my wife to try and find a pose that was, that was suitable, that was suitably romantic and sensual while being enigmatic and uh, classical in a way because this isn't a one-hit wonder. I mean, the sculpture could be in the station for sort of centuries. Hopefully people in months and years and years to come will say, I want to meet somewhere in London. Where should we meet? We'll meet at St Pancras under the statue and, and it perhaps will become the romantic place to meet. In fact, for me, the meeting of this couple, they're, they're, instead of their lips meeting, it's their foreheads are touching and their gaze is meeting. Uh, and that says something about um, a relationship which isn't just uh, based on the physical, but it's also a meeting of minds. You see this happening every single day, of people meeting up, you know, running into each other's arms or whatever it might be. And, th and that's what I liked about what Paul did. It's, it's, it's a simple story about the fact that we want St Pancras to be a place for human beings, not just great engineering. Um, and it also, is, I think, is a sort of reflection on the, the role of the station, which is, in a way, of bringing together uh, Paris and Brussels with London. And it's like the sort of the Franco-French culture, French-speaking culture, being brought into contact, very close contact, with the Anglo-Saxon world. And living in France, I know what that means from this side of the channel. The Victorians that developed St Pancras had planned to have sculpture in niches on the front of the station, but it ran out of money. And here we are, 2007, it deserves to get its sculpture back. So uh, the, the couple form a, a column um, under the clock, which is in the central axis of the station, which allows the eye to sort of travel up the couple and then over the top and round down to the station platform. And it, it sort of fits in with the, um, 
With the architectural strength of the, of the building, it doesn't try to challenge it in any way. Um, but of course it's a complete contrast having these giant figures. The whole idea of St Pancras as a meeting point comes together with the sculpture sitting under that clock. And who could fail to miss it? The whole of the Eurostar platform is flooding off towards London. I cannot wait to see it. People will look at it and go, wow, you know, how did you have the ambition to create something that big and so amazing to look at? <laughs> When you meet people, um, well, when I meet people, I'm very often aware of that, a sort of tremendous sense of privilege, almost of the miraculous. Now, that may sound a bit bizarre, but to have somebody else, another mind, another living being, you know, opposite you to talk to is actually a, a sort of a, a miraculous thing because the world could be empty. Uh, and so, yeah, I really, really value um, that those meetings, and, and in a sense, yes, the sculpture could be a way of expressing that.